Okay. Don't pass the guy in front of you. Well, I'm telling you, he's dangerous with this stick. I was gonna hit him off and then say bank shop. Run like Abby do a Baywatch thing. Run! Bring it. Okay, this is normal for us. We're supposed to leave at 10. It is now 10.30, so half an hour difference. We got a... Actually, usually we're ahead of time in this. this no, time last time we were ahead of time. That was the only time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, last weekend too. We didn't... We didn't last we, two times we were... Yeah, okay, last two times. We didn't make a video for um, last weekend. We went to... Where did we go? Night's Beach. It was good, but we didn't make a video. This time we're going up to Mikasu. We've never been there before. It's the longest trip we've taken, roughly. Sandbanks and this are about uh, the same time There's difference. On Ontario 400 North near Vaughan. That's causing a 28 minute delay. Yes, we'll we're gonna have almost a half hour delay in traffic because everybody leaves uh, Saturday morning now for a long weekend right. on the 400. So we'll see if we can take some side roads, maybe. and. Uh, do a little bit better for time wise but other than that we're just going to take our time it's showing three hours and 29 minutes that's if we don't stop for lunch which we have to stop for lunch so it's not the end of the world. no if we go right now it says we're going to get there at 159 check-in is two o'clock so we'll check in probably at three o'clock or two or two thirty or something if we just get food and take it on the road or something like that maybe yep. we'll see not the end of the world we're in no rush they found a faster route to save me five, five minutes. Days, so it is what it is. I'm not spending probably fifty dollars to spend to save five minutes, so I'm gonna say no thank you. Yeah. Um, today is probably the best day, so that's why we want to get up there early and take advantage of it. Tomorrow huh? is a washout according to the forecast, it's gonna rain. And then Monday, Tuesday, maybe rain, but uh, overcast. So today's the best day. And of course, Wednesday when we leave will be the best. Okay, after some weaving and bending and weaving and bending and going on a toll road, not going on a toll road, avoiding the highway and not avoiding the highway, we are on a gravel road, and she's taking Snapchat things. So we're on a gravel road. It's only another kilometer, but there's some highway here. I think it's Highway 11 that just standing still, and we're passing them completely. Okay, we've been driving for a while. We stopped for lunch, we stopped for gas, and uh, now we have 54 minutes before we get there, so just under an hour, another 85 kilometers. We're gonna get there. You know, we went through some gravel roads, some rush hour traffic, not even rush hour, just cottage country traffic, construction, all that kind of stuff. Oh, by the way, look at the shirt she's wearing. Got it for her birthday. No, oh, you can't see it. It's not blue. Hey, you jinxed us. Why? It's shorter. Why? Because you pointed it out, now it's gonna rain. What's that have to do with your shirt? So we're at the fill station here, we've already checked in, and uh, Darren's filling up over there. Uh, here's RV tip number one of the weekend. This is what you do not do when you come to a fill station or, or a dump station. Don't pass the guy in front of you like Darren did, <laughs> because now Darren's filling up and this guy's finished, and now he can't leave because Darren's blocking him.
Okay, that was a little bit of an ordeal, but finally we are all set up. We have friendly chipmunks around. We have a nice big site. Nice campfire down here. This is going to be a good four days, except for the weather. The weather doesn't look like it's going to cooperate, but we'll make the best of it anyways. Darren and Tammy, I don't know if you can see them. They're down in between those. There's a nice little path. You know what? Let me take you for a walk, and I will show you. Let's come down here. This is behind our trailer. Uh, Ontario Parks, you need to put a better um, outlet than the one way, way, way down there. Anyways, come down here. It's a nice little path that you can walk. Moss growing. Uh, you have mushrooms, wild mushrooms, fallen timber. And you come over here, and this is Darren and Tammy right here. The water tap is right there that people are uh, getting water from right now. Take it easy. Okay. And chicken wings. They copied us again. Copied us. <laughs> you mean you guys copied us? We were actually copied to Jed and Jared from the Yeah, so we, yeah, we, full credit to, full credit to Jed and Jared. Hi, Megan. How are you? Good. Did you see the vlog? The McGregor Point one? Yeah. Yeah, was it good? Yeah. Nobody was drunk. Megan in the lead, Andrew's right behind, Megan wins! Don't worry, there's some more shoes here. So, this is Mikasu, and this is the Narrows. Careful, Abby. This is what they call the Narrows. Look at this view. Beautiful sunset. It's gonna rain later this week, so, <laughs> uh, probably tomorrow. So we came here for some uh, sunset pictures. Look at this view. Isn't that beautiful, Abby? Wow. Megan, <laughs> What's wrong, Megan? I can't breathe. Can't breathe? Yeah. Oh, look, someone's having a fire or some kind of fire there. <laughs> no, it's not a campfire. It's ice cream time. Look at that. Everyone's got ice cream. The boys are finished theirs. The girls are still eating theirs. This, this place is, what's this called? The Narrows here at Eagle Nest, or sorry, Eagle, Eagle Lake. Eagle Lake. There's the doggy. Place is really cool. It's what? The camp store dog, yes. The staff in here, the husband and wife team, they're awesome people in here. So this is site 149 here at Mikasu. Pardon the uh, giant tarp. This was put up afterwards. So if you're watching this before, you don't see a tarp, it'll be afterwards. So anyways, it's a nice big site as you can see. I don't know if you can see underneath here. Let me uh, zoom in there. It's a nice big site, the uh, fire pit where the chipmunk is in right now is right over there we put the trailer over here the only thing is once again you have the electricity which is right over there so you have to drape your electricity all the way over there and you needed for us we needed like 60 feet probably even more 60 feet of extension so that's the only downfall so to basically if you want to back in your trailer and use that as the shortest length you'll almost be right on top of your trailer. Site 149 right there. Uh, here at Mikasu, nice big tall trees, nice uh, nice canopy, nice cover. Get a little bit of sunshine up there as you can see, even though it's cloudy today. And we're close to a water tap. Darren's actually right next to it right there, so it's easier for him. There's water taps all over this park, and just like a lot of provincial parks, there water taps are all over, but uh, this park seems to have a lot of water taps, and good ones. Good ones where you can put your uh, water canister up on a ledge while it fills up and it's got good flow. So here at Mikasu they have lots and lots of activities for you to do here. Very uh, pet friendly too. Right over here is a off-leash type of enclosed dog area. Uh, there's also 
dog beaches. So there's beaches for dogs and pets and stuff like that. So you can take your dog here. It's not too busy right now because of the weather and stuff like that, but almost every second camper has a dog. Some other activities here is horseshoes. There's uh, two horseshoe pits here, one here and then one in the back there. And of course, what campground is complete without a sand volleyball court? Look at that, you can play beach volleyball in the sand. Oh. And one of the cool things about this uh, provincial park, I'm not sure how many other provincial parks do this, but you can rent kayaks and canoes and even boats from the park or there's a store outside the park where we went to earlier and they sell firewood and ice cream and all that kind of stuff but they also rent stuff where you can you don't have to bring it down from there they lock them up here you come here with the padlock and you can rent it for the day very reasonable prices not a lot of people are renting stuff today because or this weekend because of the weather but um there's some uh, stand-up paddle boards too you can rent here at Mikasu, they have so many trails. Uh, one of the only places I've seen that have more trails is probably maybe Kilbear or uh, McGregor Point. Not that I've been to every provincial park, but here at Mikasu, they have tons of well-marked, well-maintained trails, biking trails, walking trails, hiking trails, all different trails. So Mikasu Provincial Park is on a lake called Eagle Lake. Now, online and everything, people say this is an awesome fishing lake. This is a provincial park that I have, haven't have seen yet before where there's so many people coming to fish. Like campers that are coming are also bringing their fishing gear and fishing. So it must be a good fishing lake uh, from whatever uh, I'm seeing and, and all accounts online. Apparently there's supposed to be uh, bass, pike, pickerel in here. Okay, so I know I haven't uh, talked to you guys in a little bit. It's uh, the next day and it's been basically pouring rain all day long. But you know, that's what happens when you camp sometimes. It, uh, it rains. And um, we stayed inside, did board games, went for a little wet hike uh, just to check out the place. But it was raining and nobody was out. And, you know, as a matter of fact, a lot of people have actually left here. I don't know if they were leaving anyways or the weather sort of uh, made them leave. But they're gone. So it's time for dinner now. It's, it's in the evening time. I got this little, as you can see, I'm setting it up here. It's a little basket, camping basket, that you can put different things in, different kinds of food and stuff like that in. It comes with this little carrying case like I showed you. Amazon, I'll put a link down in the description below. Pretty cool. What we're gonna try to put in here is some chicken wings. They're dripping all over the place. They're, they're fully cooked, they're just frozen. So we're going to put them in here in the basket and uh, cook them up on the on the barbecue and see how they go. I think it should work pretty good. This is pretty thin, but it does stretch, so it should be able to fit the wings without squishing them too much. And we'll just roast them on the barbecue. Simple as that. But I think I should um, wash this for seeing I haven't used it yet, and it's brand new, so I should wash it down a little bit. You know, some people see rain when they're camping and think it's the worst thing. And it's not the greatest thing, but... You know, you make the best of it. Sometimes you gotta come prepared for the rain. Not to say we did. We probably could have been prepared a little bit more than we were. But, um, I mean, walking around here when we went for a small little hike, saw some people with like giant tarps and everything like that. Um, they were definitely prepared because they, their tarps are so big that they just put it right over top of the uh, campfire and everything and they, they strung it up so high that it's actually up and out of the way and they can still have a campfire and the rest is history. It's like, what rain after that? It's like, you don't have to worry about rain. So let me see if I can close this puppy down. See, the good thing with this metal, it's supposed to bend, right? The only thing is we don't, the only thing is, starters, my hands are slippery and greasy, so that's not gonna work. It's so packed in there, even though this is supposed to bend. I hope I don't break this. <laughs> Bingo. Got it. Okay. There they are. Whoop. <laughs> Lost one. Man down. See if I can wash this one off. Okay. I think I got it. Now, if one tastes a little uh, gritty, sandy, one that fell. Okay, 
So it's as easy as just putting it right on the fire and um, put this on low. I will close this puppy down for a little bit. So yeah, it could be worse. I mean, there's uh, we're up pretty high here. I haven't even got a chance to show you a, a layout of the campsite that we have. Tomorrow when it doesn't rain, I'll show you that. But um, yeah, there's some people, like we're up high. There's some people that are down a little bit lower and with all this rain that we've had, we've had close to like 40 millimeters of rain. So some people are down lower. I don't want to name names, but uh, Ryan's with Schmerin and Brammy. <laughs> they're a little lower down and not that they're getting flooded, but it's lower down. The water is going down near them. That's all I'll say. Got to check out my wings. Ooh, looking pretty good. So yeah, so I think camping in the rain is not ideal for anyone really, but not ideal for most people, but it can be done and it can be salvaged and uh, it can work out well. You just have to be prepared, like I said. I do have a big tarp at home, I think it's like 10 by 20, but you can get the even bigger ones that are like 20 by 40 or something like that. And that's what that guy had. And if you have it strung out high up into the trees with some good ample rope, and stuff like that and you have it angled down so the water doesn't pool and it runs down in a good area and yeah, you can still have a campfire I mean you don't have to have a big huge roaring campfire but you can have a campfire and stay dry and be outside you don't have to be stuck in the trailer okay these are finished they look scrumptious and they look delicious and they weren't hard they weren't hard to cook at all the only thing I would say is next time maybe for this this um, grill is maybe spray it. sprayed with some non-stick stuff because some of the chicken got stuck on the, on, on the actual grill itself. But other than that, it worked great. And um, this might be a little difficult to wash up. But other than that, it worked great. Oh, that'll be fun. And the beauty with having a travel trailer or any kind of trailer with a closed top is when it's raining like this outside, we can have dinner inside here. As much as we love eating outside, but yeah, it's wet and, and everything's uh, wet. And um, she's asking for her wine. So the fries are here's your wine. Yeah, there we go. We have a perfect dinner, perfect fries, um, wings, salad, a little bit of French fries and stuff like that for the kids. Everything's and, perfect. And uh, <laughs> hot sauce. So with all the rain and everything, we figured we'd, uh, now that it stopped, we figured we'd try to bring the kids fishing for a little bit, see if they uh, caught anything. We didn't catch anything. Actually, I shouldn't say it. We caught one thing. Thank you. Thanks, Darren. What do you say, Megan? Thank you. So a couple days ago was Abby, uh, Julie's donuts? birthday oh, and yeah. uh, she turned 29 again. So we're away. We didn't really sort of wait too much. So yeah. we're going to burn this. Smoke check Happy birthday to you. Birthday. So believe it or not, it's not raining today. So we all have, it they look like Frisbees, but we're going to play golf Frisbee here at Mikasu. This golf. Disc golf. They're not Frisbees, they're golf. They're, I mean, w w w so what's it called? Disc golf? They're discs, disc, not Frisbee. Disc golf. Disc golf. We met a guy and he. Oh, okay. Met a guy and yeah, we met these two guys and they were hardcore. They had like, like giant bag. they had a bag full of like 20 of them. They're like putters and woods and yeah, they're really hardcore. Anyway, this is also a trail. We have to come for a hike in here later. This is a frisbee. This is a disc. The good thing is you don't have to buy these. They rent these out at the uh, camp store for you, the park store, and they're they're almost like loaning. They you give them a twenty dollar deposit and then you bring it back. They give you your twenty bucks back. So it's like a loaner. With an uh, insurance deposit. Oh! Thank you. Oh, normally. There you go. See? Darren?
So, do you guys like uh, golfing with a frisbee? Yeah. Yeah. I hope you tip and fall. Yes, that would be very fun. Hit what? Julie's the assassin. That's what people. That's what we're gonna call mm -hmm. Julie, the assassin. Dax in the back. I hit Megan in the shoulder. And the hand. I hit Andrew. Quentin in the side. Airdrop it. Look in the mirror between Dax and Dax. Oh my God, Dax. So it's 16 degrees. The boys are going in. Are the girls going in? Probably not. Go run! Run, Forrest! I thought she was gonna trip over there. <laughs> the... So, even the duck knows it's too cold to be in the water and thinks those guys are crazy. Right, buddy? <laughs> so, so we went to the hardware store locally here in town so we can battle the rain. <laughs> and we got, this is 20 by 30. There was another one that was 30 by 50 that we were gonna get, we didn't. Thank God we didn't, because this is huge. So, taking a page out of uh, Andrew's uh, quotes here, we finally got the tarp up. You wanna see what it looks like? Check this out. Look how big it is. 30 by 20. There is no sunlight being let in here at any <laughs> any time. <laughs> uh, hopefully the water will drain there when it rains and then drain here. We've got two areas for it to drain. And uh, I think that's good. <laughs> Thanks to Darren for helping. <laughs> this this is the tarp dance. This is free ride. <laughs> okay, here's the thing about this. Putting this tarp up is a little bit of an ordeal, like I said, Darren and, and the kids helped, but uh, we protected the forest. We didn't cut down trees or hurt trees in the making of this. So keep that in mind. You can do this, protect yourself and have a good camping trip and everything, protect yourself from the elements, but try not to kill the environment while you're doing it. Picture time. Quentin, what do you think of these people? Crazy. Crazy. So that is the end of our uh, Mikasu camping trip. We had a good time. The weather, you know, that's part of camping, I guess, sometimes when you want to get outdoors and uh, enjoy nature. Sometimes the weather cooperates, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, we couldn't get out and do everything we wanted to do because of the weather, it rained quite a bit. But you know what? I guess it's payback because our last few trips this summer have been beautiful and like ideal. Not too hot, not too cold, no rain. I, I don't think this was the first trip, was it not, that we had rain? So, we did it at Highland. Oh, that's true. Yeah, the Highland Pines, the very first day it rained there. But other than that, I mean, y you take the good with the bad, right? Or you take the bad with the good, I guess. But you know, there's so much to do with Mikasu. We're definitely going to have to come back when the weather's better uh, and enjoy the beach and uh, take in all the sights and all the things to do because there's so much to do. But because like it's so beach. far, like the beach, yeah. Uh, of course, it's sunny now that we're leaving. And as we're leaving, we saw a bunch of people down at the beach, <laughs> sort of uh, uh, ticked off Julie a little bit or, or triggered her, I guess you could say. But so like I said, we're going to have to come back and we will come back. But 
Mikasu is such a distance away from us, from home, that we'll have to come back. We can't come back just for a weekend for two days or something. Like that. The drive isn't worth it for just for two days. So we'll have to come back and we'll have to do more. We'll have to do it longer, like four or five days. Then it'll be worth the drive because the drive is long. But it's worth it. It's worth it if you come for a few days. You guys had a good time? Yeah. They're on your devices. They don't even know what's going on. We'll catch you on the next one. See ya. Bye-bye. So it's funny. Every time we go camping when we come back, we always have Chinese food for dinner afterwards. We order Chinese food because we're too tired and too lazy to cook dinner. So we have Chinese food. Kids love it. It's late. <laughs> so we're here now at Sabo Beach. And uh, he just found a snake. It's right, I don't know if you can see it, right there. This must be the river that leads into Sabo Falls. So Julie's doing an experiment with these uh, Oil things. It is such a nice morning. We decided to go for a nice little hike. Something is lodged in the uh, black tank hose. 